Matthew 16 and verse number 18. I'm preaching tonight on a subject I have never spoken about ever. 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 And uh, so it should be very interesting. Uh, I am going to be very deliberate in my words. I'm going to be very calculated in my words. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, just give you six statements. You're not going to be able to write them down. Uh, but I do think that you need to go ahead and, uh, and, and, and remember them. And just, this will be a CD that I will give uh, people in our church that fit this criteria in time to come. Uh, but I do think that uh, the pastor uh, needs to kind of set the ground rules and set the groundwork uh, for how things should go. Um, and I'm preaching tonight on this subject, LBT and parachurch organizations. LBT and parachurch organizations. A parachurch organization, you say, what in the world is a parachurch organization? A parachurch organization is a Christian faith-based organization that works outside and across local churches and has no a church oversight or rule. That is a parachurch organization. It is a Christian faith-based organization that works outside and across local churches and has no church oversight or rule. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18, it says this. It says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You say, Pastor, why would you choose to preach on a Sunday night on this kind of topic? Because I do think that our church, to some degree, because of who we are, and because it's just the makeup of our church, that our church uh, will, and that's not if, it will uh, have parachurch organizations, organizations that are Christian faith-based organizations that work across uh, local churches that have no church authority or rule, nobody to tell them what to do. Parachurch organizations are real. Uh, parachurch organizations are alive. They are things that, uh, and I'll get into it here in just a second, but I think it's very important that you hear from your pastor on such organizations and what do I feel about it and at what point do we need to kind of really step up to the plate and just understand this is what's going on. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask for your wisdom tonight. Lord, I am going to be biblical. I am going to take it from your word. I want to be the kind of pastor that I lead our church. I'm not here to push our church. I'm not here to goad our church. I'm going to get out in front, and I'm going to lead. The success or failure of tonight's sermon is not because of the infallible, is not because the word is not what it needs to be. You're very clear in your word. But Lord, if the success and failure will be tonight by me and how I explain it, and two, by how the people receive it. Lord, I love our church. I love 2200 West Loop. Lord, you know that as a 12 year old boy, eighth grader, when I stepped onto this property in August of 1980, Lord, my heart fell in love with here. And Lord, I've never changed my mind about how I feel about the Longview Baptist Temple. Lord, I don't know what you have in store for us in years and times to come. I do know that we need to follow your word and we need to make sure that we are biblical. Lord, I pray that you bless us now. I pray that you watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There's a lot of things about the church that I could preach on. The word church is used 80 times in scriptures. Uh, the word churches are used 37 times in the Bible. The church is a body of believers that have been baptized, uh, that have been called out. In the Bible, you never find an invisible church. It's always a local, visible body. There is no such thing as a universal church. There is, the Bible does not give credence because when the Bible talks about the church and how we fit, 
It always refers to a hand. It always refers to a foot. It always refers to an ear. It always refers to an eye. It is not a cyclops. It is not something that would be unnatural. It's natural like your body is natural. And how your parts have been placed in your body is very natural. Even God says that if you have an inferior member, um, if you have a part of you that is inferior, that the rest of the body is supposed to run to the aid of that inferior part. Example, Stone at camp this past week, uh, he injured himself and uh, injured himself to the point to where he had to go to the hospital. He had to get stitches. And Miss Arrington was like, my poor baby. And uh, Brother Arrington was like, he'll be okay. Just stitch him up. And what a dad. And, uh, but, but can I tell you something? Every bit of stone, when that one part was gashed open, every part of stone's body was concentrated on that one part because it was the feeble part. Same is true in our church. In our church, there are feeble members. Uh, our special needs segment of our church. And I can tell you this, uh, as a special needs parent, I want to thank our church for always being very respectful of our G. I think the Wangers feel the same way with Skyler. It's always a very respectful, and everybody just loves on those who have special needs, and I deeply appreciate that. But, but the inferior parts in our church, they need those special attentions. I, I don't mean this bad, but the older you get, the more of a special attention you're going to need. Don't get too upset with people that may not respond to you. They may not have heard you. And that's because they're going deaf. I was trying to talk to Brother Larry a couple of years ago, and I'm standing just carrying on the conversation. He was just ignoring me, just looking straight ahead. You know what happened? I was on the wrong side of Brother Larry because he is, what is it, your left ear? Right? This side? Your left ear? And that man ignored me. And I just cannot believe he ignored me. And, uh, and there's some people that their peripheral vision is, is, is just not what it needs to be. And I asked Miss Heather Juarez if I could, uh, she was a little bit self-conscious, but Miss Heather Juarez has had some health issues. And the other day she felt like she offended somebody. And uh, because her peripheral vision is not where it needs to be at. And uh, there's other people here that uh, they can't shake your hand because of the condition of their hand. And if they don't shake your hand, they're not being rude. And, and never assume off the bat somebody's ignoring you. That's that I assume Brother Larry was. And, uh, you, you know, that's pretty good. Because Miss Shirley's sitting on your left side. <laughs> You're a smart man. And uh, can you tell me how to get that done so I can put always Kelly on my left side? Uh, how come you don't sit on this side of the auditorium? All right, okay. And, and, and so it's, it's, it's those, the older you get, uh, the more we have people in walkers. Uh, we have gentlemen that come, and he's been faithful to come, and, and he comes in every day with his walker, people in wheelchairs. Uh, we have a gentleman that's coming next Sunday night, uh, with, next Sunday morning, that Miss Dean met, and he has a service dog. Uh, when he comes, listen to me, do not say, get that dog out of here. He can't be here. Because the pastor said, bring your service dog. We want you to come to church. He's going to have to come late. Uh, he's going to have to sit in the back of the auditorium. And I told Hannah, I said, we'll get him a place. We'll get him a special place. I'll have somebody meet him at the door. Hannah looked at me and she said, I cannot believe, one, a pastor's at my door. Number two, I can't believe that you love us that much that you would allow my husband to bring a service dog to church. And I, you know what I told her? Your husband served our country and your husband protected our country in Afghanistan. Why would we not open our arms wide to one of our veterans who will be here? I, I just cannot believe that there are churches who say, we don't want the service dog here. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is that man served our country. And if he can't exercise his freedom of religion, we're a pretty sad country. So there'll be people among us that from time to time, they will have kind of some issues. So it must be a visible local church. Let me give you six statements. Don't write them down. And just very, very succinct, very in keeping. When we talk about parachurch organization and Longview Baptist Temple. First of all, I'd like to say this. The local church is built upon Jesus Christ. Parachurch organization is built upon a man. 
today, you have to understand the difference between the two. Do not confuse the fact that somebody has started a ministry that that ministry is built upon Jesus Christ. It may talk about Jesus Christ, but there's only one institution that was built upon that rock that is promised perpetuity, and that is the local New Testament Baptist church. Nobody outranks our founder, Jesus Christ. And I think a lot of times we think that we are co-equal because we have a ministry that we now are co-equal with Jesus Christ. I hate to tell you this, nobody is co-equal with Jesus Christ. So the church has a founder, and it's not me. My name may be pastor, but I'm not the founder. I may be the one conducting traffic up here, but I'm not the founder. I may be the one organizing, but I'm not the founder. I may be the one saying, hey, ushers, this is how I want it done. Hey, office, this is how I want it done. Hey, deacons, I think this is how we need to do it. But I'm not the founder. So at the end of the day, if someone totally disagrees with this church, they have to disagree with the founder. And I carry no pressure. But a parachurch organization is built upon a man. Now, I'm getting those looks, and please don't give me those looks, because then I'm going to have to break into preacher mode, and I really don't want to break into the preacher mode. I want to stay pastor right now, because I'm trying to help. Our church only has one founder, and it's not the oldest member. Our church only has one founder, and it's not the original signee on the charter. Our church has only one founder, and that is Jesus Christ. A parachurch organization, an organization that is Christian faith-based, that works outside and across the local church, and has no church authority, excuse me, no church oversight or rule, that is a parachurch. So understand, church is built upon Jesus, parachurch is built upon a man. Don't lose me, you're going to lose it all. Second of all, the second thing I would like to say is this. The local church has a mission from our founder, where a parachurch has a vision from their founder. Now, there's a big difference. Our founder stepped up and said, Longview Baptist Temple, I'm going to give you your great commission. Carry it out. A parachurch organization is built upon a man that has a desire to tell people about Jesus Christ. I do not think that people that start ministries and people that go out on their own and start ministries, I don't think anybody gets into starting ministries because they hate people. Nobody gets out and does this. This is a hard path to walk. But you have to understand this, where the church has a commission. We have to get the word out. We have a way where to get it out. When somebody starts a ministry that they can go across local churches, they have nobody telling them what to do, It is started because at some point, a desire is put in here to do something for the Lord. Now, I'm headed someplace. Some of you you need some oxygen, and it'll come down out of the ceiling here in just a second. I don't think that I blasphemed any man who started the ministry. I'm just telling you the facts. Longview Baptist Temple has one founder, and that's Jesus Christ. That's it. A parachurch organization has a founder, and it's just a man. When the man dies, the parachurch organization will probably only last one generation after. When I die, this church continues. I'm a sixth, seventh, and eighth pastor, and I can tell you that... That was funny. And uh, I can tell you that even after I'm gone, somebody will step up here, and it'll keep going. Why? Because our founder ever liveth and maketh intercession for us. Parachurch organization. Y'all are braced, aren't you? There we go Parachurch is carrying out the personal desire of a man, and the local church carries out the great commission of its founder. Next. Christ is the head of all things in the church. The founder is the head of all things in the parachurch organization. You see, I'm not the head. Christ is my head. When a parachurch organization, a man says, or a woman, I want to start a ministry then they become the head. Everything ends with them. You know the beauty of what I've got going on here as the pastor of the Longview Baptist Temple is this. If you don't like what I say, you've got to take it up with my boss. (laughs) 
I'm just the messenger. That's all I am. But when a man starts a ministry and he decides that I want to start this ministry, I want to name this ministry, and I want to organize this ministry, then he is doing it out of his game plan, whereas I don't have the luxury of having a game plan. I have the responsibility of following his game plan. Next. There are only two offices in the church. There's bishop and deacon, pastor and deacon. So those two offices of the church have to obey this mandate. A parachurch organization also has two offices, and it is founder and board. And they meet in themselves and try to figure out what's the next step we're going to take. We don't have to figure out what the next step we're going to take. It's already told us in here in this book what we need to do. There is no think tank at the Longview Baptist Temple to decide what's the next thing we do. There is only an obedience tank, and all we do is just obey. That's it. But when somebody starts a ministry, then they must sit down and they must go, okay, man, how are we going to get this done? Well, let's gather some other men around us and let's create a board and together we'll figure out how to get this done. Well, and that's fine, but the church isn't run that way. Next. The purpose of the church is to reach a place, not a people. We're not a black church. We are not a Korean church. We are not a Filipino church. We're an East Texas Independent Baptist Church. We are called to reach a place. And throughout the Bible, you're going to find out Acts eleven nineteen. Now, when they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these kings came into the ear of the church was at Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came, had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all with the purpose of heart that they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. They, they started going to the wrong premise. They said, we're just going to deal with the Jews. And do you know what God did with Peter? God broke down that partition and said this, that which I have called clean, don't you call unclean. And that which I have called common, uh, un, uh, holy, don't you call uh, common. We're here to reach everybody in this place. We're not here to reach a select few. So the church cannot, cannot say, Well, you have to make this much money to come in, and then you have to make this to happen. Let me tell you something. A parachurch organization has to meet criteria that their ministry is is toward. They they, they truly, if you really look at it, they, they, they have to narrow their niche down to meet a segment. Where a church is... We'll take everybody. We are here to reach the rich, the poor, the white, the black, the Asian, the Mexican, the Dominican, the Puerto Rican, the San Salvadorian, the Taco Bells. We're here to reach it all. And a parachurch organization is also interested in getting the gospel out, and I believe that. Nobody is a faith-based program that doesn't want Jesus Christ exalted. But you're going to find out that they can only reach a certain segment of society. They are not equipped to reach the mass of our society. They're just not. It's not the way it happened. Now let's get down to the real foundation of a parachurch organization. I want you to go to Luke chapter 9, and verse 49. <clears throat> you say, Pastor, where do you stand on these ministries that man has started? They've named them. They now are marching. Where do you stand on this? 
I have to stand where Jesus Christ stood when a parachurch organization existed in the country he had his church in. If we believe church started with the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples on the Sea of Galilee, then did Jesus face this issue with a parachurch organization? A church, faith-based, reaching across local church lines, and yes, he did. Look at Luke chapter 9 and verse 49. John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with what? Us. Circle the word us and write out beside that church. If we truly believe the church did not start on the day of Pentecost, but the church did start with the Lord Jesus Christ, then can I tell you something? The church was already going with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the members of that church then saw somebody who also was doing work in the name of Jesus, but they were not attached to the church. So the member said, you can't do that. You can't do that. But then I want you to notice what Christ said in verse number 50. And Jesus said, forbid him what? Now, if grammatically the word would have ended there, we would have had to stop and go, I can't even say a word against the parachurch organization. But then he qualifies it by saying this, for he, that is not, what's the next word? Against us, right down the church, is for us, the church. So as the pastor, are my hands tied to where I can never stand up and say anything against a man-made ministry that wants to do God's work among people? Are my hands tied to where I have to roll over and play doormat to every ministry created by a man? And the answer is no. But I must be very wise, and you pray for your pastor. Because I have to be able to ask myself this question. Are we being opposed? Is this parachurch organization, because God said, don't stop them. Unless they're against you. Once they oppose the church, then you got to say something. And every member must understand what your pastor is saying. I praise God for any man who the desire to do something for the Lord is placed in him. And he decides on his own, with his own money, his own resources, to step out, organize something, to really tell people about Jesus Christ. You're not looking at a pastor that is anti-parachurch you're looking at a pastor that is anti-parachurch opposing the house of God and at the moment a man-made ministry causes problems in this church is at the moment I have to stand up and say we got to talk There are two things you have to understand. And don't write them down. Just listen to me because I'm bearing my heart because this is something that I deal with every single day. There will always be a group of people that want to follow a desire God has put into their life. And I really, I'm not jealous I don't want to stop them. I don't want to get in their way. I'm not going to preach against them. I'm not going to do anything. In fact, Jesus simply said, forbid him not. Forbid him not. Don't, don't, why are you wasting your time? We, we got stuff to do in the church. And if they're going to work in my name, but not through my church, which there is a big difference. To do things in his name, but not do it through his church. 
That's where this separation happens. And Christ said when they're doing it in my name and they're not opposing the church, leave them alone. So then we come down to this. Boy, we just all got a pizza. So the question is not the parachurch organization. The question is, what do we do when the parachurch organization started by a man opposes the church, comes against the church, and why does it happen? A parachurch organization must have two things to thrive. It must have a base of workers, and it must have a pocket of money. It must have a base of worker, and it must have a pocket of money. Because if someone gives, a, if God, someone says, boy, I just really want to do something for the Lord. But I don't, I choose not to do it inside the local church, then this man has to get a base of workers, and he has to get a pocket of money. Guess where they both will come from? That is why parachurch organizations, and I'm going to let you guys be the church. Can I do that? Would that be okay? You guys get up there. You guys in the front row beside Stone and RG, why don't you guys get up there? Go ahead, get up there. Stand on the wood. Stand on the wood. So if I want to start a church, I mean a ministry, and I step out and I start a ministry, and I want this ministry to thrive, then I have to have workers and I have to have money. So at what point do I, the pastor, then say, it's okay for this ministry to reach up and go, I want you to come help me in my ministry and I want you to finance my ministry. Well, can I show you what happens? Come back up. If five men that start their own ministries inside the local church starts this kind of stuff, Josh, I'm going to let you start your own ministry. Okay? So if you'll come down here, I'm not against them. I'm not against them at all. He has a desire to live for the Lord, and I believe that. Step right down here. And I am not belittling any man who starts a ministry, but I'm a wall walker and I'm a gatekeeper. And everybody's got to listen to your pastor. And if this means we need to re-vote for pastorship, I don't mind the eighth time. <laughs> for the Anthony, I'm going to let you start a ministry. That'd be okay. Jordan, I'm going to let you start a ministry. This doesn't bother me. When, when, whenever somebody says, boy, I just really want to do something for the Lord, and I want to do it in Jesus' name, wow, this is great. But when you have to keep it going by reaching into the local church, and all of a sudden, and I just, guys, want you to get two each, and all of a sudden, I'm up here, and I'm like, all right, let's raise the, no, Anthony, from up here. I, I'm... That's a dumb parachurch organization. And all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, I need someone to teach Sunday school. Boy, we need to make sure we get the bills paid. Why don't we have any workers or money? Because men who want a ministry... Go to the only pool of people to have a heart that they too want to do something for the Lord. We have to be very careful, church. I don't stand here in opposition against any man who wants to do something for the Lord. I do stand here to tell you, dear church, that it's not fair to our church. It's not fair. Because do you know and do you even understand and 
that every month I bet that your pastor lives, I get a phone call from different men who have different ministries and say, can I join your church? All you guys come back up except the ministries heads. Come back up. Come back up. There are people all the time, and it'll keep happening, and I praise God. There are men who have a desire to do something for the Lord. And if I'm boring you right now, boy, I apologize. I wish we had a coffee shop so I could send you to it. We got the coffee bar at the college. Does that work? Okay, good. And, uh, and there are people all the time who say, can I come join your church? And, and there for a little bit I was flattered. This is great. This is wonderful. But then I quickly realized that all of a sudden they were working their ministry off our church and it was like, okay, what are we doing? Do you know how hard it is to get somebody to teach Sunday school? Do you know how hard it is to make sure that everything runs the way it needs to run? And when somebody gets excited about the things of God, then all of a sudden a man-made ministry decides to reach their long arm into our church. Then I the what do I do? Do I roll over and play dead? It takes money. It takes a work base. If a ministry wants to be a part of Longview Baptist Temple, then I cannot take the church, follow me, and I cannot get on his page. And there's ministries that say, okay, I want to come join your church. Now, I want your money, I want your resources, and I want you to get on my page, and I want your church to be known as the home of this. There's only one problem with that. This is not my church. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not my church. So here's what I have to say. Let's go back up, church. Let's get out of here. Let's go back up. Let's get back to where we need to be. If God truly lays on a person's heart to bring their ministry here, then he will have to get on our page and help our church fulfill God's vision for our life. Not us get on his page. So my first question to them is, are you willing to get on our page? You are? Good, then you'll fit right in. Come on up. Come on up. Good, good. Are you willing to let me pastor you? Good. And are you willing to let me take the reins? Good. And if I tell you no, you'll stop. Good. Good. And if I tell you you're fired, can I keep your ministry? I can have it. You're sure about that? Because you now are on our page, we're not on your page. That's the only way this is going to work. You say, oh, there you go, absorbing kingdoms. There's only one kingdom. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not against anybody who does work in Jesus' name. As long as they don't try to take the workforce and the money from Jesus' church. Go back down. I have had people, though, that I totally appreciate that have come up to me, and I'm going to let you come up here, Jordan, that they have a ministry, and, and they've come to me, and they've said, Pastor Gray, I, I have a ministry, and do you think that the ministry that I have would benefit your church? Pastor, here it is, and I would like to do this. And, and I'll sit here and... and, and there are some that I've gone, now that's incredible right there. And then they'll say, can I ask so-and-so to help me? Wow, I think that would help Seth. And so I have no problem saying, I think your ministry 
would help Seth Riley become the kind of Christian Seth Riley needs to become? Absolutely. Why don't you ask Seth if he'll go with you? And y'all, go do your ministry. This ministry is not a threat to me because it checked in with the gatekeeper. I'm not a jealous man. I'm not a man who says, no, you can't be a part of that. If we didn't birth it, we don't want it. That's craziness. Because God speaks to men's heart and God speaks to people's hearts. And I have no problem with a man saying, you know, I was sitting in a conference and God spoke to my heart and, and, and I want to step out. Boy, I just have a desire to do something for the Lord. Wonderful. 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 But can you check with the gate before you go into the community? Just check with the gate. Because there may be somebody that you come up. Um, you already got a worker. Come here, Anthony. You need a worker. And there may be somebody that you step up and say, say, God's laid on my heart. Oh, let's say Hunter Kidwell. Say, God laid Hunter Kidwell on my heart. God laid Hunter Kidwell on my heart. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Well, he didn't lay him on my heart. I'm going to take him anyway. You can do whatever you want to. See the conflict? And if somebody truly is led by the Spirit... Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, temperance. And when he says, God's laid Hunter Kidwell on my heart, and I go, I don't think Hunter is the guy for you. And uh, as pastor, you have to trust me on this one. I don't think Hunter is the guy for you. So I think we need to pray a little bit longer. A guy who's willing to slow down and let pastor help him is a guy who's going to get the most benefit out of our church. But someone who will run me over doesn't have the best interest of our church at heart. He has self-interest at heart. Let it be very clear. I'm not against any man. Go back down. That says God has led me to start such and such. Say, pastor, what can I do as a member? Number one, if you're approached by somebody, you simply say to them, have you talked to my pastor? Have you talked to my pastor? Now, I'm not talking about United Way. You guys can have a seat. I'm not talking about United Way. I'm not talking about this. If the Girl Scouts show up to your house and they want to sell you cookies, you don't look at the Girl Scout and say, have you called my pastor? Okay, if United Way shows up, I'm sorry, you have to talk to my pastor. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who their only connect with you is the Longview Baptist Temple. They would not even know you if it wasn't for this wonderful church. Then I think you need to say to them, I would love to win the world to Christ. I would love to help people. But have you talked to my pastor? If you get a phone call from outside this church, and it's a ministry, a parachurch ministry, and they are seeking and enlisting your help in their endeavor, all you got to say is, have you talked to my pastor? The second thing I would admonish you to do is ask me. Ask me. You know, I don't want to be number one in anybody's world. But this church could be hurt awfully bad. If everybody did what they wanted to do, and it's amazing to me, nobody goes after the feeble members. Everybody goes after the good-looking ones that are the eyes and the ears and the nose. You know what part of the body I am? The chin. I say this to those of you in this church that you have ministries. I'm not against you. I am for you. But would you do me the courtesy of checking in with the front desk before you make any plans? 
You're going to find out this. I'm for winning a lot of people to Jesus. I'm for this one. But sometimes there's not enough gas in the tank to get us to where you want us to go. And sometimes I have to say, you know, we don't have enough gas in the tank. Payday's not till three months from right now. <laughs> We're going to have to park it on the side of the road until we get enough money. Well, do you have somebody? I wish I did. If you'll give me six months, I can groom you a crop. No, no, no. It's, I understand the urgency of the harvest. Lord knows I understand the urgency of the harvest. But I understand that we have to follow our founder's lead as we do it. This is his church. We're a family. I love our church very much. I mean what I said in my prayer when I stepped on this property when I was 12. 35 years ago. I didn't even want to leave. I told my dad, leave me here. And my dad left me here with the Ragsdales. And I stayed for two weeks. I was like a kid in a candy store. I couldn't wait to go to school in September. I couldn't wait to be part of the church. I, I, I love this place. We couldn't afford a janitor at the church in my freshman year. My dad used to drop me off to vacuum these hallways right here before school. And I'd get up here, I'd get that vacuum cleaner, and I would vacuum these hallways. Good old Mrs. Weaver would come to work every single day. She'd scare me half to death coming down that hallway. Miss Joy Smith would scare me the second round. I was in, I was in heaven. I'd clean the rooms, and I was just like, this is where I want to be. And I want to be very... I want to be very much a good host to men that have visions of doing something with their life for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be very gracious. And I want to do my best to get behind any man who says, Pastor, I just have a vision to do this. And Pastor, I have a vision to do this. Wonderful. Pastor, I have a vision to do this. Wonderful. Are you willing to get on Longview Baptist Temple's page and let me help you get it done? And if they are, wonderful. If they're not, God said, don't forbid them. Because they're doing work in my name. They may not be doing it in my church, but they're doing it in my name. I think zeal, I think that a desire that is not tempered will hurt us. I have probably not struck a chord inspirationally with many of you tonight. But the purpose of my message tonight was information, not inspiration. The purpose of my message tonight was to let everybody know, I do know the pulse of our church. I am very aware of what is going on. I do believe strongly about what I just said. And I am not scared to have the right conversations at the right time. I will make sure that our church stays healthy. But I really need you to do two things. One, get on the page so you're so busy helping our church fulfill God's great commission. Get plugged in, let's get busy. Number two, be excited for anybody who has a ministry. And really, honestly, if a ministry doesn't fit with us, this is, this is my heart. Boy, I hope it fits with some church. And I hope there's some church that can pick it up and just help it go where it, where it needs to go. But this is the Longview Baptist Temple. And we can't have parachurch organizations eating away at our foundation. So if you have a ministry that God's laid on your heart, check with the gatekeeper before we start walking through the community and say, hey, can you give this money? Hey, can you go here? Hey, can you do this? Hey, how about taking two weeks? And how about, hey, how about, 
I got nothing against this. But your only connect with the workforce is because of here. You didn't find the workforce in your neighborhood and you didn't find the workforce on your job where you work. You didn't find the workforce. Because the neighbors don't care. People at work don't care. The people at church care. We have a chance to do big things for the Lord. Heavenly Father.